We good? Oh, we weren't rolling. I thought we. I thought we were. No, we're not. Well, would you like to repeat that? Then? No. <laughs> <laughs> would you freak me? <laughs> I'd freak. Me. Okay, there's the intro. Actually, yeah. That's toned down for. Uh, <laughs> For the kids. For all your sensitive ears. Why are kids listening to this? Yeah, get back to school, kids. Hit those books. Do you need to be gang banging life. those books. Ooh, that's from Straight Outta Compton. Isn't it's it? on FX now all the time. Don't say gang banging. That's what he said. Y'all be need gang banging them books. Let's get to it. Let's, right. let's please. <laughs> This is the NPR version. I'm Carrie. I'm your host. <laughs> and um, <laughs> no, I'm gonna I'm gonna be a little bit louder than that. Uh, so Chad and Sarah are with me. Hello. Hi. Where are we, guys? We're in line at Liquor Barn. Doing what? <laughs> Just hanging out. For We're waiting. The elusive Weller CYPB, we which are. it appears that we will not be getting. We probably are not. Um, I'm 18th in line, and Chad I'm is 19, and Sarah is 20. I'm hopeful. And um, I'm very tired. It is currently. 5.05 a.m. We've and, been out uh, here since 3. We have. Um, I got about two hours of sleep last night. Oh, yeah. Same. Yeah. What's our motivation in uh, doing all this again? <laughs> hanging it's out. all for you. <laughs> this is what... Oh, stop it. This is what bourbon <laughs> people... Podcast. This is oh, what okay. bourbon people call camping. I mean the fans. Yeah, this is, the people this listening. This is uh, blamping. Blamp, blamping. Bourbon... Bourbon camping. Glam. Bourbon glamp camping. Yeah, exactly. We're, we're glam camping and we're it's drinking... But we're yeah, camping the is glam in there. Too. I don't think you're going to make bamping work. Stop trying to make bamping work, Chad. <laughs> it's not going to This podcast is so fetch. Oh, well, finally. Geez. Finally. <laughs> but yeah. So, so um, as we recently introduced, we have a new segment on the show called Flying Blind, where we try something we have either never had before, wanted to revisit, or Perry blinds Chad and Sarah with, I guess. <laughs> Yay. Um, Yay. I'm, I'm about... 98% sure you guys have not had this yet. Ooh. Um, so it's extra blind. <clears throat> this is actually, yeah, we actually had this this past week on the podcast um, for repeat listeners. But what do you guys think about the nose on this blind bourbon at the very least? I think it's nutty. <laughs> huh. I don't so much get the nut. It smells like old peanuts. At the moment. <laughs> like at Logan's, <laughs> when they have all the peanuts on the floor. That's what it smells like. It smells yeah. sweet. It smells low proof. I might be wrong. All, th- all things are taken into account. Okay. On the Smart Bourbon Podcast. It's kind of peanut buttery. Yeah. I don't know. I'm going to give it a shot. <clears throat> You're going to give it a shot? Well, I'm not going to shoot it. Don't well, shoot I, it. I We're not in college. college. I mean, I might <laughs> shoot it. I'm not I got anymore. nothing else to do until 9 a.m. That's true. <laughs> <clears throat> all right. T minus four hours. Oh, that's that's nutty. Oh, okay. I didn't get it on the nose, but I get it on the taste. Yeah. Um, and it is mild. It's lower proof, I think. Yeah. It tastes like it might be an 86er, maybe a 90er. 90. I would not say it's above You're, a 92. Chad, you just, you amaze me sometimes. I am pretty <laughs> It's an 86 amazing. proof it is nutty an 80, bourbon. It is an 86. <laughs> okay, so what would you, if you had to ponder a guess, that's not the right phrase, but whatever. It's Fincher? Five, Venture, I guess. Give it's, us your hypothesis, Chad. It's 5 a.m. My I'm hypotenuse is <laughs> it's a triangle. You said that one episode. I was like, Chad, that's a triangle. <laughs> Chad, that's a triangle. That's what she said. Did you not take geometry? That's a triangle. That's a triangle. So if you had to venture a guess. Did you not take trig- 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 trigonometry? <laughs> Apparently you didn't. Hey, it's four in the morning. And I'm drinking bourbon. Yeah. It's, it's five in the morning. morning. Okay, it's five in the morning. We've been here since three in the morning. Uh, if I had to venture a guess, I would say it's like some type of Jim Beam Black. You are correct in brand. Jim you are incorrect in expression. Jim 86 proof beam. Beam. And well, you okay. Think we you have, said we, <gasps> we haven't had is. it. 
What is it? What is it's it? It's the new one. It's it is the new one. <gasps> it's the repeal badge. It's the repeal badge. Mm-hmm. Okay, very good. Yes, I win. I <laughs> am. Did win. I am a big fan of this. I bought a bottle. I haven't. Uh, have, we haven't uncorked it yet. Well, I'm sorry it's, to ruin this for you. No, your okay. uncorking, but it's definitely no. nutty. It's a super, super typical Jim Beam flavor yeah. profile. Like the nuttiness is. Who hit the proof? Oh, you hit it oh, right, you on, hit the it right you on the nose. You hit it. You hit it from was, the nose. Once you said that, I was like, okay, thinking of that line of like things that they do that are 86 sure. proof, and I was yeah. like. Perry said, I haven't had it, and it's 86 proof. I was like, ding, 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 we have a winner. <laughs> <laughs> so this was our review from our last episode. I gave this a hard recommend. Mm. You, you, don't, you don't hear that. 20... You, you hear hard pass. You don't hear hard recommend. No. <laughs> a hard recommend. I, 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 I give this it a was hard an 18... recommend. <laughs> Thanks for that. Would you recommend me? <laughs> oh, I'd, I'd recommend, recommend me. me. <laughs> oh, my I, God. <laughs> Eighteen dollars before tax. <laughs> Eighteen dollars. Eighteen dollars. I would tax. definitely oh. recommend this. So my I'm hypotenuse slap here. Yeah. What's your hypotenuse? My hypotenuse here is that this is going to be the first in a line of Jim Beam tradition uh, editions. Tradition editions. Yeah. I like really. It. Yeah. I would say that what we're, what we're looking at here is. Jim Beam's introduction to a whiskey row kind of lineup. Mm. Mm-hmm. Oh, that makes sense. Because mm-hmm. 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 I what what we're experiencing right now is a trend in people who want to drink and try older bourbons, meaning dusties, mm-hmm. and companies approximating that with certain expressions. And I think that this is Jim Beam's first venture into it. And I think what we're looking at next is probably like a 1960s version. Well, you know, it's very, it, you Jim know, Beam. people say, oh, it's a pre prohibition style bourbon. You know, that's very trendy to say, like pre yeah. pre prohibition. Sure. You know, that's Prohibition's such style. a catchphrase sure. now. And, a yeah. recipe that we found from a scrap of paper that was buried and a blah, blah. <laughs> or not even a recipe, <laughs> like uh, we got it off of tasting notes. That someone else, right. from, yeah, you know, right. I mean, that's the, the turkey well. The good, thing. the good thing about Jim Beam, though, is that they've had their exact same recipe since their inception, and they won't tell you so, what it is. No, they won't. Nope, but, it's a secret. It's a but, secret. Secret recipe. I mean, all they had to do was basically match the mm. aging and filtering conditions that they had post prohibition. Yeah. So, if this is their whiskey rose series, why is it so affordable? Is that like Jim Beam's model? Thing. Like, that, if you've got it to be affordable? I That's another just... thing that we were talking about, too, is that it's limited edition, so why isn't well, it... they did that craft series. Remember that? Jim Beam yes, craft I series. do remember that. And those are more in, like, the... F- I want to say the $50 range. But, you know, those are still sitting 50 around 50 to places. 70 yeah. So yeah. maybe they found that the Jim Beam drinker, even though they are the largest, is the you lower know, price in the world, drinker. Yeah. is the lower pri- is a lower... A more price conscious drinker. And if you want, sure. If you want your customer to pay more, you've got to call it Knob Creek. You've got to call it Basil Hayden. You've you got to call, call it Bookers. Bookers. You've got to call yeah. it Bakers. And so it's not like they've the already got their. Series, so. <laughs> I mean, they've got their <laughs> yeah. white label and then they've got their high end stuff nailed down. So I feel like for them, this does make sense. I'm just mm-hmm. curious, like, this is really good and it's $18. So. Now, I mean, do you think this is truly going to be limited, like they say? The a limited time well, offering? See, that's, that's the other thing, too, is we were talking about how with Distiller's Cut. It was supposed to be limited. It was supposed to be limited, but now you can find it everywhere. Yeah. But for how long? Maybe like after this year, that's, we won't and, see it again. And that's the other thing we were saying, too. It could be a one year run. If that's the case. You know, I think that it is reasonable to call it a limited edition, even though it's in a more readily available market. So Agnell supplies are low? <laughs> I'd say take your time. <laughs> call now and wait. There's more. I will, I will say this. I will probably be buying another bottle of it. I mean, I, I, I bought two at the get. One to uncork and, and one then to keep. Uh, one to keep. And that's how I am with this is that I yeah. think that this is the most affordable... And, and and this is just me projecting. I think that this is the affordable collector's edition Jim mm-hmm. Beam. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. You know. okay. Okay. I'd like to blind this with Distiller's Cut because I really liked the Distiller's Cut. And we like the black. I like Devil's Cut. You like Choice. I'd love to do like a, a Jim Beam old flight. versus new kind of yeah. Jim Beam flight. I mean, you know, Choice is no longer offered. Right. So sure. But I'd still like to know if with what they're coming out that's new versus what they've discontinued. Sure. You, what you like, because that Jim Beam choice was Don't your you point first. At me. 
Oh, I'll point at you. <laughs> she's pointing at me, folks. Uh, <laughs> you can't see it. Your oh, she's winner giving of the, the 50 under 25. Yeah. <laughs> now that they don't make it anymore, I'd be interested to know if true. blind you'd like this better. It's true. Now, this, yeah. um, remind me, this is a non-chill filter. This is non-chill filter. Which is very interesting. And that's what makes it lovely. Well, here's, here's what I have to say to your I'd like to try it blind against distiller's cut. I tried distiller's cut right before I tried this. Yeah. This, to me, was more favorable. Mm. From Which what I remember, distiller's cut, it, it, does it taste, like, darker? It's just, like... A little bit. It, but it's, I think 100, it's 100 proof. It's 100 this is 86. proof. Yeah. It's interesting that you picked the 86. I, Over and the that, And that's what I was yeah. saying, too. You guys really need to listen to last, last week's episode. But it wasn't blind. Quit <laughs> pushing your agenda on me, Perry. I, I'm, I'm my own but person. But it wasn't blind. And that's... It wasn't blind. You're that's right. That's the only thing. You're right. Like, I trust your judgment. I just always I like okay. oh, <laughs> I'm kidding yeah, I, I just that's always fair. like that experiment of knowing when you don't see the labels what's what's the real answer yeah. so yeah for sure for sure so yes. cool well that's so, fun yeah, Fine, I'm glad you guys, I like it yeah it's a it's a fun little segment that I thought will would you be... please write a song for this segment because flying blind I just there's so many uh, options out there flying blind again <laughs> <laughs> flying blind again <laughs> ripped up <laughs> like a bourbon in the middle of the night. So I learned the uh, the <laughs> uncorking theme on guitar today. <laughs> Did you? <laughs> yeah, because I was da, 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 da. yeah, because I was bored. Please excuse it's me. In the key of, it's in the key of C, by the way, for anybody who. Oh, I don't know what key I was in. Just I thought there. it was probably a, no key. I thought it was in the key of B for bourbon, but oh, I guess not. Well, now you're bourbon, just gonna have to pitch it flat. down. You're just gonna. <laughs> <laughs> bourbon it's bourbon flat. flat. Anyway, wow. there's no bourbon sharp. So no. we have we have plenty of time to kind of kill here before this you're really welcome before the opening <laughs> yeah. mm-hmm. um, so we have plenty of time to talk about what we've been drinking recently oh god and you guys have plenty to talk about what you've been drinking we recently. have been drinking Texas whiskey why have you been drinking Texas whiskey because we went to Austin yeah let's tell you for what do I have to prompt you with every tell us Chad. at this hour yes <laughs> Uh, we went to the Crowded Barrel Distillery opening, which is the Whiskey Vault, with the Whiskey Tribe, the Whiskey Biscuits. Uh, all them whiskey guys. All them things. whiskey guys. Um, Daniel, yeah, and Daniel and Rex. And they were super awesome. Like, they invited us down. I felt so, I don't know, included, like, special. <laughs> like, thank you. Oh, my God, we got invited. But, no, they're seriously, like, so nice. Yeah. And they were super accommodating. And there were probably 400 people there. I don't know. Is what they said. They estimated 400 people to come to the distillery opening. And it was like, you know, we got to talk to them a little bit during the day and then at the end of the night. But it seemed like they were the kind of people who just made a little bit of time to talk to everybody. That's awesome. And it was great. I mean, other than it being almost 110 degrees outside, (laughs) um, it was awesome. And by that we mean it was 109. Yeah. And... It was a dry heat, but almost no. 100. Yeah, it, was, it was a dry heat. It was still hot. It was a dry heat. It was a dry heat. It was hot. Um, yeah, it was super awesome. Like I feel like we didn't meet a stranger the whole time we were down there. You yeah. know, even people that we met for the first time was like, we already had something to talk about. We so. played, and we didn't even. I don't think we even told you this very before, but we played Cards Against Humanity down in the hotel oh, lobby. Oh snap! With with all with those some 50 fans. people. Uh, <laughs> It ended up being like what seven people in that seven game people, started yeah. with four, mm-hmm. Oof, and geez. people just kept adding. adding. Do me in, I, do me it in. was like the longest oh. game of cards. Against Sarah and I were oh, tied. Dude. We had six cards each. You win with seven, and I was like, and I'll be damned if I go to bed. And Chad wins. Had six. <laughs> yeah, everyone was like against me. It was kind of weird. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> this other guy came out of nowhere and won. So yeah, good did. for him. Yeah. Well, but anyways, enough. yeah. But so um, we've been drinking Texas. Whiskey. Texas whiskey. Texas uh, bourbon. Texas which in, whiskey. Which in particular? Well, my personal favorite, and I believe this is also Chad's. Mm-hmm. I can't speak for him, but we tried um, from a distillery called Iron Root, which is um, northern Texas, I believe. And they are coming out with a cast strength, with which we got to preview there. Mm-hmm. But it will be out at all Total Wine locations in October. And it was fantastic. Like Awesome. For... The, compared to everything else we were trying, because Texas whiskey is actually yeah. very different. You know, mm-hmm. um, it's treated different because the heat and where they store sure. it and stuff. So they can't age it more than three or four years, or else it just becomes straight up oak. Yeah. So this actually had so much flavor, and it was just super balanced and more like a 
Kentucky bourbon, I would say, but I mean, it was really good and strong and the like dark yeah. color for only being like three to four years old. It was yeah. awesome. Yeah. Yeah. And not all, you know, it seemed like a lot of them started with the small barrels, mm-hmm. but then eventually they graduated to the, to the bigger ones. Um, we went to, uh, oh man, oh, Garrison Brothers. Mm-hmm. Um, and they use 15 and 30 gallon barrels, which, which I've is, never heard of, which is odd. I've heard Weird. of, I think I've heard of 15, but not 30. And then one place <laughs> said they do 55 and 65 gallon barrels. I'm like, that's not standard at what all. Are what do, are why are you making what this you, up? You, and who doing? makes these for you? Yeah, exactly. I mean, Let's it wasn't the world's biggest whiskey barrel. <laughs> <laughs> and it wasn't like here. It's, it's either independent stave or, um, yeah. oh crap. I'm blanking. Independent well, stave or and then Woodford makes their own. Well, they have Coopers. their own. Yeah, they have their own Cooperage. Kelvin. Kelvin, thank you. Kelvin mm-hmm. Cooperage or Independent Stave seems like around here. They're in Texas. Like, no, we got this Cooperage that's making our barrels and da 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 da. And it's like they just kind of operate. It seems it's like different. on their yeah their own rules, their own type of thing. Yeah. But um, yeah, no, it was interesting. You know. Uh, we got to try Eleanor, which is the whiskey the, tribes. Yeah. Which they had, f- I couldn't four believe. Four different expressions. Yeah, it was MGP sourced, but they. They um, aged it there. Okay. They aged it there. It's okay. Yeah, so. All good. Um, they had four different recipes, which were all really great. Mm-hmm. And it's just like, it's crazy again how the heat can help and change the maturation versus what it does here. Right. So we tried all four and not a one of them. I mean, all four of them were delicious. They had um, one that they called Nutty. <laughs> they did. They called it the nutty one, and of course, Chad, the Chad was like, expression. This one. I think it was like sixty-two. I thought they could have called. They it. had numbers. Yeah. They had fifty-six. Okay. 56, 60, 58, 60, 62. 62. Sixty-two was my favorite. Sixty-two was my favorite. That was the nutty. But then we had the same favorite. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> anyway. Shocker. Uh, unfortunately, it's not available for purchase widely, but. Um, it, if you're it ever will in be Austin, I would right? recommend going I guess. to the Crowder Barrel. Like I think it. You would hold out. To be. Yeah. Um, I just want to address all something. Pre-orders? I want to address something real quick. I'm sitting here just without a blanket, and you guys are like you two, have on you like the two grandparents. You have on long pants. I do. I do, I do but you guys are also like the grandparents and well, well we're prepared. Chocolate. We packed yeah. well. We for packed this? well. We brought well, like I also run hot. So <laughs> he runs hot. <laughs> he runs a little hot. So are you cold? <laughs> no. Okay, then you don't need a blanket. No, I know, but it's just funny. <laughs> I've got like grandma and grandpa. Sitting I'm, in their recliners. Oh, yeah. I, I have my Talking feet up right now. Get like, off my I lawn. am reclined. <laughs> Get off my lawn ramp. Get off. Yeah. Well, you, I mean, my you guys lawn. have had... We're old a, souls. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we, uh, yeah. Yeah. You guys have had a pretty good little what you've been drinking. Oh, yeah. We've had a long... Yeah, that so. was long. We, yeah. we got to wrap that up. Oh, yeah. Plus, we came home with samples. <laughs> we did come home with a lot of samples. Jeez. And it, we had several good finds down there. So yeah. it was overall a good trip. Yeah. Awesome. What you been drinking? Nothing... Special, really. Um, I'm trying to hoard a little bit of uh, Heaven Hill Bottled and Bond right now, mm. which I'm oh, yeah. not going to harp on too much, but it is, according There's to... That rumor. It, it's starting to become more substantiated uh, that they are rebranding and going national with it. Gross. <laughs> Do you have... How many? You have some of those, right? I got four or five back... Around the first rumor that it was going away. All right. I mean, well, Ken- I'm going to get some more. Kentucky yeah. folk, it's time for us to stock up on it. Stock and, um, up. Hey, guess what? We're at a liquor store, so we can go buy some. Hey, <laughs> look at that. Where are we again? <laughs> We're at Liquor Barn. I'm Name tired. drop. Anyway. Yep. TM. <laughs> <laughs> um, I've actually been drinking, a, a, not regularly, but some more of this uh, repeal batch as well, because I've just it's been a such a fan. easy sipper. It is maybe my favorite 86 proof. Wow, bold statement. Yeah. Bold. Yeah. Again. Daring. I want to blind you. <laughs> well, no, she wants to I blind you. Fine. She wants to take out your eyes. <laughs> wow. They're just what are you going to do with them? Wear them as a necklace? <laughs> uh, whatever Buffalo Bill does with with the eyes he takes. It puts the know. lotion on the skin. It does what it's told Or Mary. gets the Fair hose. Up. What of Hannibal Lecter references <laughs> today. <laughs> We're getting into fall. It's almost Halloween. I want to drink this bourbon Christmas. with a nice bottle it's of Chianti and yeah, some it's fava just beans. Now September. We are five hours into September. It's basically Christmas. <laughs> yeah. Break out the tree, kids. Because Santa's it's coming Heritage tomorrow. Month, then bourbon it's my tree. birthday, then it's Thanksgiving, then it's Christmas. So yeah. that's how it works. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, I feel like we should further the conversation. We should probably because. Is there a topic? <laughs> 
Yeah, I think our main question is, why are we doing this? <laughs> why are we waiting in line uh, for bourbon? All why are you in doing the this, pursuit of hype. That's what the, <laughs> is it that's, the what the, that's what the podcast name should be. Is it the, the pursuit, pursuit of hype? hype? I want you this to is tell my us why you're doing this. So for me, I, I was having a conversation with somebody about this on Facebook last night, actually. And they were going, I don't think that I'm going to do it. You know, that no, I'm going to get there too late and everything. And I was like, why not go out of your way to have, and, and I, the way I phrased it was a guaranteed chance mm-hmm. at buying it. And that's what we're, in essence, doing is guaranteeing ourselves a chance at a chance buying something. at giving them our money. Yeah. <laughs> well, when you put it that way. I mean, but I'm not trying to Let say it in a negative way. Like, it's, it's a... <laughs> give you our money. Yeah. Yeah. Shut up and take my money. Please. <laughs> Shut up. Shut up and take my money. But it's also because I, I think there is a little bit for me of FOMO, fear of missing out. Oh, yeah. You know, I mean. Well, can that, you ever remember a time when a new Weller line came out? No, because. So that's. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean... And limited or otherwise. Right. Right. You know. So, I think for what us... What Weller isn't limited nowadays? Yeah. Well... I mean, do I want it personally, like, for us to drink and have in our home? Of course. But... Sure. Even if I can't get it for that, like, I want it, whether, wherever it comes from, sample or lending a bottle or otherwise. Content or we get wise, one today, yeah. um, which is unlikely. Fingers crossed. It's it's for us, but it's more to share. Like, we want to share that experience yeah, and let you internet. know... Because, you know, that same thing kind of happened with King of Kentucky. All about people content. were, like, super bummed. That sweet, sweet content. Exactly. Yeah. That sweet content. <laughs> um, people were bummed about the King of Kentucky. Like, when we got a bottle and people were like, oh, man, I wish I got one or I passed on one or whatever. Yeah. And we tried it and we were like, eh. Don't. Don't be bummed. Eh. Don't be bummed. And then people said, like, this made me feel better or, like, I'm glad I know what it's like, but now I don't have to feel bad about not getting a bottle. We were diffusing that FOMO. And I kind of feel like... We're, yeah, our FOMO will help diffuse someone else's FOMO. Your taste makers. <laughs> well, <laughs> but if we say, oh, my God, this is awesome. It's amazing. We love it. That also sucks, too, because it's going sure. for, like, I don't even know. What's the inflated rate on that? Uh, 300? What, 300 oh, it's or 350? Be. I mean, but what's the on-the-shelf price? What, 40? 40, I think. Oh, it's CYPB? I'm trying yeah. to think. Sorry, I thought we were talking about the King of Kentucky oh, for a I second. I was back. like, I was okay. like, oh no, 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 no. No, so for King this particular going for bottle, yeah. we're trying to do the same thing where we can, you know, give some insight onto whether you missed out or whether you're fine yeah. by missing out. Um, so, but the question is like, if we say it's amazing, like if all three of us agree, this is awesome, and sure. we are so glad we got a bottle if we get one. Well, I. Go ahead. But the, is it worth telling our fans like to pay three hundred fifty dollars, which is how, well, how many percentages? Like, what is that like six hundred percent? Well, it I can, don't know. It can be amazing. I can't do math. <laughs> it can be amazing for forty dollars, but what? would it be is amazing, it amazing for three hundred fifty? Very doubtful. Doubtful. Sure. Very so doubtful. What? Oh yeah, the CYPB. Oh, yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. That's yeah. what we're talking about. Yeah. <laughs> <It's>... <laughs> oh, you're fine. No, you're fine, man. <laughs> Welcome to the show. <laughs> Come on, come We're on. Under on. the cover of darkness. <laughs> <laughs> you are too. <laughs> we have a retracted um, guest there. Hi, <laughs> Donald. Yeah, so it's <laughs> it's like uh um I have to wonder if we didn't have a show, mm-hmm. would we would we be here right now? I mean I would say I probably wouldn't be. Okay. I would probably be a couple hours later. Yeah, I think we would have been here, <laughs> yeah. but we would have been here at like five or six. Like yeah. and even still we got here at three and I still don't think that was early enough. Yeah. And that was just to make sure that we got it to hope to make sure that we got it for right. to do an encore. And that probably won't even happen. And it doesn't even look like that's gonna happen. Yeah. But you know, it's worth <laughs> a try. So I mean, is it unreasonable for us to be here at three AM? No. No. See that's the thing is We're that Kentuckians. I, Sure. <laughs> and we're also, I mean, aside from being Kentuckians, we're also bourbon nerds. <laughs> bourbon drinkers and collectors. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I think that it's not out of the realm of reasonability. But like, so how long, reasonability. How long did people wait in line for like Furbies back in 1998? I know, never waited in line for a Furby. My mom did. Okay. But those things you know, have no value but now. But people <laughs> wait in line on Black Friday for TVs. 
Like, if that's what's important. Sure, they wait in line for a deal, sure. Right. If that's important to you, then that's fine. If it's not, then that's fine, too. Is this a deal to you, Chad? Uh, No, because Weller Antique... Is uh, cheaper. Well, let me just say (laughs) Weller 12 is less expensive, and it is 12 years old instead of 8. And it's... uh, No, it's 90 proof, sorry. A little lower proof. That's what I was going to say, is is there a... You know, do you take the proof into account in this instance? I do. It's what, 95? 95, yep. So, okay. Um, it's two years older than Special Reserve, and it's five points higher. Mm-hmm. But And it's $20 more. But it's a limited novelty product. Like, they spent oh, marketing dollars novel, yeah. to get the information to be able to craft this bottle. So, I get that being passed on to the bottle. Like, I do. And I if still think $20 more is stupid. a reasonable price. Yeah. yeah. They if they didn't stupid. make it more, it would be stupid. Yeah. Now, a couple... They of- are wishing that they had released the Weller line in the boom, and they could have said, like, $50 for Special Reserve, 60 for 107 and 80 for 12 years. They totally could have. <laughs> but since they did it so low, like, again, MSRP on 12 years, what, $30? Sure. It's insane. Which I think it's, it's even gone up a few bucks. I but think not it used by to much. be twenty four ninety five. Yeah, uh, like they can't be. They can't say, "Oh, it's popular now. Let's raise it twenty five yeah. bucks." Yeah, they can't do that. No. That's not a Buffalo Trace thing. No, no, and they've been very adamant too about their pricing and have yeah. said, "You know, we're yeah. not. We're holding the line at eighteen ninety nine. And good for them. <laughs> I mean, sorry, that is don't give me that face. <laughs> <laughs> good for them. No, I had yeah. friends the other day pick up bottles of Special Reserve in a store, and they were like fifty dollars. Sixty dollars, yeah. I think they were actually more for than a that. Fifth. It was like sixty or seventy bucks for a fifth of special reserve, and I slapped their hands. I was like, "You put that down <laughs> right now." <laughs> I was like, "I can fi- just be patient. I will find you a normal price." Yeah, and we did, and we did. Yeah, yeah. and like, don't. It's, I feel like so many people, like Weller, has become the new Pappy <gasps> of bourbon. Everybody knows Pappy, and now everybody knows Weller. Yeah. Yeah. And even people who aren't people have willing given, to sit think, out here. I think people have given up on Pappy. People They're given, like, I'll never have that. Right, that's what I mean. But Weller. They're yes. like, yeah. okay, I can't find Pappy, so what down that line can I get? And Weller's that new thing. Mm-hmm. And everybody knows it. It's becoming a pop culture thing. Well, yeah. it's amazing to me that it's strictly like a <laughs> Pappy. <Bless> people are sneezing. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I... I find sneezing to be one of the funniest things in the world. I don't know. Well, it's I so involuntary, and it's such like a weird fart. <laughs> <laughs> I have. Both but are involuntary, and both make weird loud <laughs> involuntary. sounds. Involuntary. <laughs> Hopefully, you can hold those. I think a sneeze is more involuntary. And my, uh, sorry. So <laughs> let me let me get back on. That's track. a real topic. <laughs> Let's talk. What's more involuntary, farting or sneezing? Farts. Oh, Funny Chad. or not? No. <laughs> Hilarious. I don't care how old you are. <laughs> I would see in Dumb and Dumber. I'm sorry. <laughs> with the X Lacks. It's, it's amazing to me that. Oh, you're trying to keep it high route. I get it. <laughs> that crazed five in the of weeded bourbon seems to be more isolated to Pappy and Weller. Mm. Like, I agree. There, no one's there are, losing their mind over old fits or Rebel Yeah or, or, or Makers. Or makers. Like, yeah, exactly. Makers. You know, it, what is it about. The, the Buffalo Trace Weller and Pappy line. It's that. It's I think that. it's that it comes it's from Pappy. It's that mash bill. It's, it's that the distillery. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, totally. But I think that objectively, Larceny might be a better product. Ooh, that's some fighting words. Did you just <laughs> drop my mic? <laughs> Not to me. No, I, I didn't. mean, like, to the audience. If I did, I cut it out. And you just can't drop that drop I think that mic. it is a, what do you call it? Um, a commodity? Like, <laughs> it is a commodity. But I think it's a, a, a status It's thing. a legend. Sure. Okay, because Makers isn't a status. Everyone right. can have Makers. Larceny, not a status. Everyone can have Larceny. Pappy, status. And by relation, Weller has become status. You get a Weller 12, you're... You're balling. You're balling. <laughs> and, and I think that's how people... Balls to the wall balling. Like, yep. think when they look at it. I mean, you know, especially out-of-state people, like, where it's yeah. really hard to find. So... Or easier... I, I think it's about if you're taste. In Texas. Well, or easier. <laughs> we didn't find any twelve in Texas. No, we didn't. We but did I find th- an antique. Yep. And so. some special reserve. And some special reserve. So, yeah. That's true. 
So I think it is about taste because Weller is a great product, but I think it's also about status because if you blind me with Weller and Larceny and Makers and all this and that, what are we really all going to pick? I don't know. Yeah. I'm not knocking Weller's. I'm just saying, like, I think it's definitely that name has some weight and that's what's, that's why Makers and Larceny and Old Fits and all that aren't. That's pretty loud for 5 a.m. I was going to say, I, 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 would, I need to point out, we're also open air for the first time on the show. And oh so yeah. if you hear some... Uh, A podcast under the stars, I can see yeah. Orion's belt right Aww. there. Um, Are we having a moment? We're having a moment. We're looking <laughs> at the stars, folks. Uh, that's all I can see. I can't see anything else either. No. Um, uh... What were we talking about? Weller. Commodities. <laughs> yeah. Commodities. Yeah. Well, you know no, what? No, I agree. Yeah. You it's... know what we haven't done in a while? Huh. Drink. I had any words. <laughs> oh, let's do that. So you know what I have. What do you have? I was like, yeah, why is my cup empty? What you I have. have. I have. Hold on. Oh, he pulled out a flask. It's another. Of? It's a. It's another. Another flask. My oh, other. What? Other flask. My other. Other flask. My other. Other. Bands. You didn't find my other flask. <laughs> Weller one hundred seven. Ooh, oh, okay. perfect for our topic. Because yeah. I figured this was nice, appropriate nice. in terms of. You and know. you know what? I would really love to do this blind, but I have a feeling that I would pick one hundred seven over twelve blind because I just. Chad, like I will the blind you on that later. All right, do it. Well, we um, we did a review. Of Weller 12 with Curtis, Curtis. probably about a month Curtis. Curtis. <laughs> probably about a month and a half ago. And then a few weeks ago, we did 107. And 107 unanimously scored higher right? than, than Weller 12 did. The 12. Yeah. And, you yeah. know, we've always said that age isn't everything. It's just a number, I heard. <laughs> it's definitely <laughs> just a number. <laughs> yes, Sorry. I'm a comedian at five um, in the morning. But you know, it's like you had very good quips. I, I will say, so, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So here's the new thing: we we now have to every episode record with you at five a.m. Oh God. Yeah, yeah. We'll drag call, you out of bed. Call Sarah at four thirty in the morning. I feel Can like you do a at, podcast in like thirty Sarah, minutes. It's, it's time to drink bourbon. Even at it's three. bourbon o'clock. I mean, that's why I would get up out of bed for that. <laughs> it's true. I was like, they should have an alarm clock that just releases the smell of bourbon. Or is that how you know you have a problem? New invention. (laughs) New invention. Is that like a problem? Bourbon This guy gets it. Yeah, he knows. He gets it. He gets it. Yeah. Yeah, We got laugh from the peanut gallery. You can either set it to bacon or bourbon. Or both. (laughs) No. (gasps) Both. Bacon, bourbon. But not that nasty bacon bourbon that they actually sell. Brown sugar, maple... Bourbon No, no, no. Barrel. Like, I want to smell bourbon barrel. and bacon is cooking somewhere like, in the distance. Like when you walk into a Rick house and you smell that, I want that as yeah. my alarm clock smell. Yeah. I don't think that's going to wake you up, Chad. I think that's going to make you dream, dream sweeter dream. dreams. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> uh, what are we doing? This, drinking? We're drinking. 107? Ours. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah. I So, I'm drinking out of a... Would uh, you drink me? Yeti. <laughs> I drink me. I'm drinking out of a little... Well, it's actually an Ozark. <laughs> oh, it's, well, it's the Walmart brand of Yeti. It's the Walmart Yeti. Yeti. Um, hey, it's good enough. Little, uh, little cocktail cup here. All right, then. And um, for some reason, I don't know what it is. And it may, ju- may just be because in less than 12 hours, the Wildcats are about to open their football season. Sure. It smells like game day to me. It smells like game day. Mm, game day. It smells like game day. And I, I just want to full day. disclosure. Oh. This is not the ending of not the end of my drinking day. All this is the beginning. the beginning, and this it's an early start. Perry, you're going to be beginning. in bed by 8 p.m. Well, I also have to go play music later tonight as well. Perry, Perry, so. this day is a marathon, not a sprint. <laughs> this I hope is you my, remember that. Where are you playing music? At a polo match. Oh, we can't go there. What? We're not classy enough for that. Oh no, it's totally fine. So you like guys really polo? should. Go. Barking loud. Let's talk about. Let's take this offline. Okay. Um, yeah, and we'll, we'll make these we'll plans later. later. We'll talk about it later. All right, fine. Yeah. <laughs> um, I I really do love the nose on one hundred and seven. I mean, there's just something so like comforting magical. and familiar mm-hmm. and magical about one hundred and seven. It's like just the right proof. So we realized um, the other day, and don't you dare steal this. <laughs> Those fighting words. Ten seven. It falls on a Sunday, so we're going to do a live episode on 10-7 of 107s. Why would I steal that? Because it's you genius. You bastard. I don't know. I'm, gonna, <laughs> I'm probably going to be moderating that live stream. Okay, oh. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. yeah I so will, I will moderate 7. that live stream, 
we're going and to do I will also be drinking 107. Yeah. So let's name so. other 107s. Um, Pure Kentucky, Pure Kentucky XO. XO. Yep. Bakers. I was. Ooh, Bakers. Yes. Okay, I'm out. Old Rip. Yes. Oh yeah, that's right. So, yeah. but first 10. we Old will have to 10. uncork that. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. <gasps> that's good. Stuff. The crown jewel of uncorking. Another 107. The crown jewel, not, not really Pappy Twenty Three. Hey. Well, it's not the main jewel in the crown, but it's in the crown. Oh, that reminded me. We had a 45-year-old scotch in Austin. And it tasted like... It wasn't bad. A 45-year-old. It tasted like <laughs> licking the face of a 45-year-old man. <laughs> Daddy, this tastes like grandma. <laughs> no. You're right. It does taste like grandma. It we'll actually, take a whole bushel. It actually yeah. was pretty good. It was really smooth. It was not bad. I yeah. was more tolerant. People kept bringing me scotch in Austin, and I was way more tolerant of it than Chad was. I don't know. Yeah. Well, it's true. I'm just well, that's true. I'm just intolerant. Uh, I don't know what the <laughs> math ratio is, but I feel like 45 years in Scotland is equal to like 20 years. 20 in years Kentucky. in Kentucky. Yeah, yeah, agreed. Yeah, so I get that. But yeah. something like that. I don't know. So, anyways, so back anyway, to this bourbon. 107. Yes, I love 107. Well, or antique 107. It I just probably be a little it's, clearer about it. It warms you up just enough in the chest. It's you know good. what? I actually. Might deem this the perfect game day bourbon. Oh, because now what makes better than okay. a game day bourbon? What makes a game day bourbon? That's mm. a tough call. I would mm. say they are both great game day bourbons, but I think this one might be perfect because it is mild and smooth enough to drink in the summer months, the hotter months mm-hmm. of football watching. But it also has enough kick to it. If you drink it in November when it's forty degrees outside, It'll and warm you're, me up. Yeah, you've got hand warmers and feet warmers and like. Moving all around. So I feel like the high proof of the 107 makes it be a late summer slash into fall. Yeah. Perfect for game day. Perfect for tailgating. Like, it's got enough. You're not going to get hammered. It's not barrel proof. Mm-hmm. But it's also not an 80 proof. You, you know, it's right there coat. in the middle. Yeah. You put on your bourbon coat. It's game day. It's crisp fall air. Like, you're good. You can drink it in the afternoon. Right before you go into the game, stay warm the whole time. It's just... It's game day juice. It's game day juice. <laughs> it makes, I think it's just, I can smell football in the air, like you said. And I'm it, starting to get the itch for it's the. It's an itch, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. Even though our team yeah. sucks. <laughs> Not cares? this year. Not this we don't year. know yet. We don't know. We'll year. find out. Ask me again in 12 hours. And ask, I'll, me. ask me. Ask me about time. my football team. Don't at me. <laughs> don't at me, bro. <laughs> no, I mean, I love to go to football games and cheer for them, but I don't have. Yeah. Super, I hope. Yeah. Yeah. Basketball is where it's hey, at for us look, in Kentucky. Look, guys. The invitation to come and tailgate with us later today, too, is still uh, open. I will, I will call you from my couch. <laughs> no, you will. <laughs> well, well, I guess FaceTime. I know what we're doing. <laughs> yeah. So. So let, let's talk a little bit more about CYPB, because that's what we're here for. Right? Uh-huh. Right. I have had CYPB. I tried it at Southern Whiskey Society. <laughs> Humble brag. <laughs> you think you're better than me? It, yeah. <laughs> well, you think you're better than me? You want to fight? You want to go? You want to fight? You want to go, bro? You think you're better than me? You looking at me? You what? talking to me? What's going on? <laughs> Where are we? What's happening? So Who's I, that? I, I it's like taking a dog it. to the vet. What? <laughs> Who are you? What's going on? <laughs> Who's that guy? We lost Chad. Ah, uh, he's gone. It's every, uh, what's his name? Mark Wahlberg movie. Oh, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. That's yeah. good, that's good. always that's ask good. questions. <laughs> what? Who are you? What's going on? Well, Mark Wahlberg is The like, plants are angry? He is solely uh, he's solely like an expositional character sure. or actor. Sure. Even though they try to market him as No, we a should do a film together. It'll be big. <laughs> All right. Well say hello to your mother for me. <laughs> Thank you, Andy. <laughs> wow. So you're a dog. Hey dog. Hey dog. So you're a dog. <laughs> say hello to your mother for say me. Say hello to your mother for me. I'm sorry. <sighs> Do you so hear that Andy, Sa- Andy Samberg on Brooklyn Nine Nine reminds me so much of you for some, or maybe it's the other way around. I don't know why. I think you guys have very similar. He like, copies me. Okay, fine. <laughs> I could see it. I, Not the like, copying part. He, he <laughs> owes you so many royalties. royalties. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> anyway, I was on bourbon. a boat first. <laughs> <laughs> I was on a boat way before he was. Straight flipping copies. How many years before? Oh. Okay. So well, anyway, Chad's old, so. no, I'm just kidding. So I had lazy Sundays before he did. My 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 point in all this. Or your point? In you, pure pure speculation. Do you guys think that the hype over CYPB is worth it? Uh, I can't say ah, because I haven't tough. tried it. Yeah. Tough, from a tough, marketing tough, perspective. Pure speculation. From a marketing perspective, 
I think it is really cool yeah. what they did. Also, I think it's kind of weird what they did. Like, we all did this thing on Buffalo Trace's website where we put in our I never ideal. Got <laughs> we put in our ideal, like, <laughs> mash bill, how many years it was stored, where it was stored, blah, blah, blah. Gave us all this information about our dream date bourbon. And secretly, they were like, we're collecting data on you. <laughs> and we're going to make Facebook. this a thing, right? Um, which is cool and also. Weird. Creepy. And also not cool. Also <laughs> creepy, but weird. Um, but yeah, so I get, they made this whole website thing. They made this whole program. So I get the money that went into that. So I understand the cost of the Weller CYPB. Right. And I get, it's limited. They're not going to do this very, like it's not an extended Weller product. Unless it's, I mean, I don't know why not oh, though. Man. What why if don't it they becomes, just make it one? We, I think we talked about this when it was first released on, on your first podcast. First announced. We were talking about gimmicks. Uh, sorry, first announced. Do you and think it's a gimmick? Well, that, that's, that was actually, it's a bit that of a was actually it's my a next bit of a question. Gimmick. That podcast is a quagmire right there because we were like, what is what defines a gimmick? And yeah. That was a whole mishigash. But, but, but it was like... Um, Oi, with the Jewish words. <laughs> <laughs> it was a shanda. It was a shanda. <laughs> uh, I'm putting the kibosh on yeah, you. Yeah, I'll put the kibosh on me. It was like, we'll have a brisket later. <laughs> like... Um, yeah, other what, Jewish stereotypes. Def- I'm not amused. What defines a gimmick? Is a gimmick inherently a bad thing, or is it marketing genius? And is the CYPB a good thing, or is it just taken away from Weller 12 and, and the others? I'll just say I don't think a gimmick defines the product. I think a gimmick defines the method of advertising the product. Like the usefulness? Like... I feel the like a gimmick has a bad hype. connotation. Hype. Gimmick yeah, has a negative connotation. Okay. As well. Yeah. Um, it does. But I think... Hey, Starbucks is open, by the way. That's cool. Um, <laughs> I think gimmick has a negative connotation, but I think it should be defined as something that is used to manipulate the public to buy a product. It's the hook, right? The hook, right? Yeah. It's the hook. So I think and the hook, hook of this bad. was you all picked it. And now we're making it. It's already a limited product. Here's an even more limited product. So here you go. Yeah. Yeah. And maybe it's a great, maybe it's fantastic, but it's still a gimmick. I mean, they could have said, you all picked 23-year-old Pappy. <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> so that's my other thing is, like, there we don't know. There are eight bottles. And you can you find. you know people, when they did that thing online, yeah. they were like, huh, my perfect bourbon's Pappy I want to get a Pappy. Or whatever, you know. <laughs> I think mine was... Elmer T. Lee a lot. Mm. I think I got some Elmers. Because in the I beginning, I didn't realize that you could do the um, so it's been several, the mash bill to wheat. Yeah, it's been several years. <laughs> it smells you, good. Are you jealous no, of that food? It just smells really good. Perry has food envy. <laughs> it, smelled, it smelled like McDonald's fries for a second, and I was like, oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, sorry. Moving um, on. Yeah, I, I feel like that test was going on for several years. I mean, I can it remember was. taking it. Maybe Several three times. years ago? Yeah. Like a while ago. So they've been collecting that data for a while. Mm. And I just, I also find it hard, a little hard to believe, because I don't trust the system, mm. that they actually, like everyone actually picked, like you said, something that was affordable for them to make and not Pappy 23 to package and produce. You right. know? Like, I find it hard to believe, oh, what a coincidence. This is actually something that we could do and would be affordable. Yeah, just think of all the non-bourbon regulars who took that test. They would have been like, oh, I want a really old bourbon, you know. Something old and smooth. If I put in weeded, I'll get pappy. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) You know. Did anybody ever get pappy with that? I I never did. And I tried. I went back and like, I'm going to try to get pappy this time. It might have not been an option. You got Weller 12. Well, I aged it for 24 years. (laughs) (laughs) I put maximum age. Mine's coming out in in 2035. (laughs) (laughs) I think it was a cool experiment. And I think whoever did the marketing for it is really smart because they made something now that people want. It's limited. People are already going to stand in line for Weller anyways. Now they're even more excited about it. Yeah. Who knows? They could do a release every year of Crafter Perfect Bourbon and people would still be out here. Oh, that would be a good idea. Reset, do a stag. God, that that be. <laughs> Reset the counter. Do it again. Yep. Oh, no, it's a seven-year Weller. <laughs> and, but the, yeah. I don't think they're going to. Ah, get out of here. You know. Ugh. That's what you voted for. I don't know. Now it's Elmer T. Lee Ultra. 
or Extreme Mountain Dew Martini. <laughs> it's you know, like ETL Max <laughs> with two X's. ETL, ETL Max. Max. <laughs> In that weird 90s, like, electricity. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. ETL2, back in the habit. (laughs) (laughs) Back in the cap. Because he wore, you know, he wore that cap. Right. And each bottle comes with a free cap. I don't know. You collect six caps, send in, and you get a cap. (laughs) Oh, boy. It's interesting. I mean, but I feel like at a certain point, Weller's already so allocated and people are already chasing it so much. How much more can they really... Exactly. Exploit. How much? Yeah. Well, okay. Line. Well, here's the thing. Here's so the thing. So you could go. You could go anywhere from eighty all the way up to. They've also expanded. Yeah. Exactly where I was going. Yeah. Here's the thing. So they're building these twenty-five million dollar warehouses left and right. Yeah. They are ramping up production. In seven years, we're really going to be experiencing the flow of this ramped up production. Right, the response to the bourbon boom. So it's like, maybe they gotta be like, we need to secure that we're gonna sell the stuff that we're just now making that we won't be selling for another six, Mm. seven years. Yeah. So let's do this. You better really hope that Ancient Age is gonna do well. (laughs) (laughs) Ancient Age is underrated. This is what you all wanted from six years ago, or whatever. I mean, it makes sense. It's a hell of a marketing thing. But at that and his point, marketing it, hype is hype. Mar- you know, it's like at, at, at a that gimmick. Point, I mean, though, is the the bourbon boom over? Has the, bu- <gasps> has the bubble Perry, burst? Don't say it. But I'm just I'm just speculating. Like, are are they planning too far in advance? I don't I think mean, you can ever plan too far in advance. No, and I think, look, <sighs> this is. I mean, everything, every trend, every fad comes to an end. And it goes in cycles, yeah. It does. Things cycle. But I will say, like, obviously bourbon has reached an all-time high of popularity. At some point... I mean, we're, doing, come, a, we're doing a podcast in front of a freaking right. liquor store. <laughs> at, at some point... At, five in the morning. Almost six will, o'clock. <laughs> it will deflate. O'clock. At some point, Sorry, it will, I'm it will deflate. <laughs> I'm, I'm about ready for some steak and shake, I'll tell you that. It does smell good. I want some steak and eggs. They but had breakfast. Sorry, go ahead, Sarah. Go It'll ahead, Sarah. come down at some point. Is it right? about bacon? Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Never mind. It will yeah. come. Yeah, no, it, it will come down at some point. But my my th- thought is, are they investing too much in the inevitable future? So, well, go ahead. People are always going to drink liquor, right? Sure. Okay. In good times so, or bad. In what? In good times or bad, people drink. Right, people will drink liquor. No matter what, they will keep drinking liquor. Mm-hmm. What we learned from the 90s and the 80s was that vodka was cool, but then people got bored with it because it has no story, and it's just a limitless number of flavors, and it's basically the most story it has is how many times it was distilled. Right. And, you know, gin is cool now, but, it, like, it's, it's coming of, back. It's coming back. Tequila it really is. is cool, but it's coming back. But bourbon has the most authentic History rooted, like traditional, a, at least in America. Internationally, people love bourbon too. So yeah. and whiskey. So I'm like, yes, it will deflate at some point, but how much? Will it bust and go back to nothing like it was in the '60s and '70s? I don't think so. I think no, too. Yeah. I don't think that's ever because the happen word again. is out. Because when it was at its lowest, there wasn't the internet. Right. Now people are initiated. They know. Sure. They know and the story. They know the history. I don't think it'll ever go as far down as it was. Well, and I, I think, too, that we are so far past the... When, when bourbon was at its lowest, it was during the 60s and 70s. What was big in the 60s and 70s? Counterculture. Protests, yeah. We're so far past counterculture where people were going, this is not my life. I want to drink what my grandfather drank. Yeah. Like, we have very well moved past that notion of it's it's just not cool. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and I think the bourbon has definitely come back around on that cycle mm. to where it is cool again. And mm-hmm. I do, I guess my point in it is that I can see it being reasonable to invest X number of dollars, X number of rick houses and, and barrels and everything into it. But at this point, you okay? Mm. Okay. That was just a big line yawn. <laughs> but at this point, have people done too much to live up to a hype that may not well, exist what I'm, in the next 10 years? What I'm worried about is everyone trying to get theirs. So this podcast, we've already talked about 
Jim Beam starting like their what we what we speculated as their whiskey row, right? Yeah. With the repeal batch. And so Jim Beam's got that going for them. Uh, Wild Turkey is doing those um, Bourbon Baron. Oh, yeah, Is that yeah. what they call it? Bourbon the Baron. The pre-prohibition stuff. Pre-prohibition yep. where they bring back defunct. Which, by the way, whatever happened to those? Oh, they're, they're coming, coming out back. with are another they? Yeah. Uh, Bond and Lillard, but they are not coming out with another Old Rippy. Yeah, another Bond and Lil- so, Lillard and another one that I can't remember the name. It's a new a, one. Like another okay, one so yeah. there's yeah. another brand yeah. coming out. So those yeah. are coming okay. back. So that's good, because so, I, I was thinking about that recently. Like, what yeah. what happened yeah, to that Yeah, they're going to do another lunch release So they've got that. Uh, Old Forster has their Whiskey Rose series. Um, you know, uh, Whitford has all of these special, what do they call it, Master Collections? Master... Master Collections. Master yeah. Collections. Uh, something like that. Yeah. Jim Beam has Signature Craft series. Jim Beam has Signature Craft. Like, all these people have their... Their thing. We're, oh, now we're coming at that. So, Buffalo Trace. Now, Craft Your Perfect Bourbon. Yeah. All these things. Like, everyone... I... I I've compared it to comic books before. I'll yeah. do it again. Comic books in the 90s. Chromium covers, hologram covers, uh, variant editions. Sounds mm-hmm. like Pokemon cards. Yeah. Uh, well, Mylar it, I mean, bags. Japanese holographic the, yeah. view. <laughs> Mylar bag with a card in it. You know, Have you uh, got your Charizard yet? All, <laughs> all this stuff. And it worries me because everyone out there is trying to get their, they're trying to cash in. They're trying to get their piece. Sure, sure. And is that what's going to end up killing it? Because people are just going to throw up their hands and be like, you know what? I'm done. Well, I think at some point... I just want my old crew. There will be too many choices. Like, you've got your old reliables and the big distilleries that you know. They're going to keep putting out these collections. They're probably going to be decent, at least, or great, you know, from a range between there. But then you've also got these craft distilleries who are also making a grab at all these things with Uh, what they do that's unique and different and cool. We age in small barrels. We age in extra large barrels. We roll our barrels. We roll our barrels. We use this kind of corn. We use that kind of corn. We heat cycle. We do the Solaris thing. I don't know. But that's what's going to happen is that's what's going to cause the bubble to burst is oversaturation. Mm -hmm. Because right now I feel like everyone's buying into it. Oh, I'm going to pick sure. up that new thing. I'm going to pick up sure. that new thing. I'm going to pick up all these new things. And eventually they're going to be like, I'm, I'm done money. with this. I'm <laughs> done with this. I'm done with this. I'm only going to get this and this. And, th- and that's the thing too. It's a crapshoot right now. Yeah. You know, and we, we've talked a lot recently about what's the best craft distillery or who is putting out the best earlier or younger bourbon. Yeah. You know, and I think that the only way that people are going to really know is to try stuff, but at the same time... You get kind of burned that way, too. Exactly, mm-hmm. and if there's so much for you to try, at some point you're going to be like, I, I don't care anymore. I know what I like, this is what I like, yeah. this is what I'm going to stick with, because I'm tired of spending $60 on bottles that I don't like. Yep. I mean, we, as in Sarah and myself, have already kind of eliminated one particular special release a year because we've been burned on it a couple mm-hmm. times. And we're just like, you know what? If we don't get that particular one, no big deal. Right? Everyone else is chasing and we it. And a channel. I'd rather chase something else. <laughs> yeah. It's like because you got to pick and choose everything. after a while. But this, yeah. so, so, so this year, disposable incomes. This year's special release hasn't made any difference to you? The age and the proof has. I mean, the age and the Perry proof. Perry knows what we're talking about. I know. <laughs> I know exactly what you're talking about. The proof, because the age always See, that's stays the thing the same. for me. Is Here's this the year the proof right. is what's the, the difference for me? The proof is Half the highest. I would too. I would happily try it. But am I gonna? Am I gonna get here at 3 a.m. Okay. to try to get one? I don't think so. Probably not. I did last year for you. Yeah. And I got burned. Yeah. But that's Thanks, okay. You got man. a little book. Yeah, I did. Oh, <laughs> a little book. I would okay. rather have the little book. Honestly, well, yeah. I'm glad. Sure. So I can see that Sarah's getting sleepy eyes. What else you got in that pack? <laughs> or oh, I just keep or we I'm pause fine. for a restroom break. I say we pause for a second, and we will be back very shortly. We'll All right, right let's do that then. And then we'll drink more bourbon. Hey, Jack, okay. we'll go get me a steak and shake. Steak and shake. Extended break. I needed a nap. Sarah needed a nap real bad. Sarah took a nap. A long nap. We've had food and coffee since then. Yeah. It's and now 7.30. It is 7.30. Uh, it's almost 8 o'clock, actually. Jeez. Yeah. 
last time that we were with you, it was uh, 6 o'clock. And that's your time update. All from, right. Uh, <laughs> good, <laughs> good podcast. podcast. <laughs> so, so what happens is minutes pass. Minute. And then the clock. Time. It goes around. The sun clock. moves. Yep. Earth. <laughs> the sun is up now. It yes. is. Sunglasses have been applied. Bourbon has been poured. And we're going to drink some for our review on this episode. I'm struggling to form words and <laughs> be Basic awake. sentences. Yeah. <laughs> so um, our review for this episode is Early Times Bottled and Bond. Uh, unfortunately, we are not recording uh, for Patreon because it is very early. And, we and all... it's really not set up for a recording situation. No, not, not Sorry, quite. Sorry, patrons. Not quite. So um, we'll, we'll get you something special later this week, I think. But anyway, so Early Times Bottled and Bond. Brown Foreman product. Same mash bill as King of Kentucky, right? Yep. The bottle says, hold on. Uh, Old style whiskey, generations of experience in crafting fine whiskeys, and it was established in 1860. It's a good looking label. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I like like the throwback quite a bit. Um, Have you got, you guys have liked this in the past, right? We have. We had it in the past and have liked it. Mm -hmm. Um... Better than I have been Hill Bottled and Bond? I don't know. I haven't had them side by side. Right. I haven't either. But I think this one is a little bit more full in the dark side of mm-hmm. flavor. Yeah, dark like side the dark of the side. force. They have cookies. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, yeah, I, I kind of get what you're saying. Like, I think the Heaven Hill Bottled and Bond is a little lighter on the nose, like a little more yeah. mellow. This has got more, like, spicy notes yeah. and caramely notes. Yeah, that, Just, like, deeper, richer a little dark bit. dark caramel. Right, but I think that Heaven Hill Bottled and Bond is a little bit more balanced overall. Agreed. Than this is. Yeah. But Don't be hating on my Heaven Hill Bottled and Bond. Well, of course not. <laughs> I just think that, like, the brown sugar is a little overwhelming on the... It does. You know, it, it like makes baking. sense now having had King of Kentucky, like this turned up to 125, would whatever be. it was, mm-hmm. would be a little extra. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and sure. it is. But would it also then be worth, what, $200? Uh, no. We've already established, in our opinion, no. And, and that's a big old fat no. If you're curious about King of Kentucky, get the early times of and Bond. If you don't <laughs> like it, then there's your answer. If you're curious about it, watch our uncorking of it. And do that. There you go. And listen to and listen to Perry's podcast because yeah. Chad gets real salty about it. Yeah. Well, I'm the one who spent the money. We <laughs> I know had you are. a small <laughs> disagreement. <laughs> oh, we did. That's the most we've gotten into it. Yeah. Yeah. During the review section. So go watch it. <laughs> listen to it. I mean. <laughs> yeah. Do whatever you need to do. That would have been a good one for recording. Good video one. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. I think honestly, overall, the nose is a little bit flat for me. Like, nothing is particularly jumping out other than the brown Car- sugar. Dun- and, like, there's a little bit. You good? Yeah. Did you just spill? Well, I thought the recorder was falling out of my lap. Ooh. So the answer is yes, you spilled. Yes, I spilled. Did you spill <laughs> on the Zoom? No. Okay. My pants. On his pants. On your pants. He was trying to save the equipment. Do you need a change? <laughs> yes. Did you bring it? <laughs> take your pants off right now. <laughs> Excuse me while I take my <laughs> pants off. Get a little more uncomfortable. <laughs> oh, my God. Anyway, I think the nose is a little flat. <laughs> Anyways, um, <laughs> you know, it's 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 all right uh, for you know what twenty two dollars a bottle. <laughs> yeah, I think I got this it's, one for twenty three. It's a pretty good nose. Yeah, I'd say. So, I mean, I would if this and King, <laughs> King Kentucky were the same price, <laughs> I'd get this. <laughs> ouch! Yeah, ouch. Okay. Sorry. All right. The. And I've already, I've already taken a sip, so I'm going to go ahead and talk about mm. the palate while you guys sip on it. For me, the palate tastes almost like straight chocolate cake. It's very... It is cakey. It almost reminds me mm. of, like, Black Forest cake, because it has a little bit of cherry, too. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But Good it also call. has, like, a slight, light sweetness that's, like, the icing. Mm-hmm. I don't know. That's yeah. That's kind of how I'm feeling right but now. But it's real sugar. But it's real like, it's, sugar. It's not, like, an artificial... Right, right, right. Sugar. I mean, it tastes like real granulated white sugar. Yes. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> that good stuff. Perry's over here scratching his neck. Sugar. <laughs> <laughs> it's 
a hell of a drug. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, I think, again, for the price, I think it's great. I think the finish for me is where... It, it that that's where it's I bit, think the weak point it's is. It's a bit short, yeah. yeah. But it's short and flat. On a, eh, yeah, it's not an awful note to finish on, but I mean, I've had better. So there's a little bit of like a. I shouldn't say that. <laughs> I've had better finishes. There's a little bit of like a green apple or a citrus note on the finish. Mm. That kind of lingers and fades a little quickly, but I, I definitely notice it, especially on repeat sips. You could get a little. Lemon peel, maybe. Yeah. On the finish. No. I mean, it's definitely... There's a slight citrus note in there. Yeah. The brightness of it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Towards the middle back. Yeah. And like we said, too, price is, what, $22, $23. Yeah. So it's not going to kill For a you. liter. For a liter. This For is only liter, offered in too. a liter. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Which I think is a steal. I think so, too. I think and so again, too. I would recommend it. Over King of Kentucky. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, King of Kentucky. In that case, the price is a five. Yeah. <laughs> right. Well, speaking of numbers, we have a review system of. I'm going to wait for the truck to pass. <laughs> you, no, talking about, you talking about Never this Pool This was easier piercings? a couple hours ago when there wasn't as much traffic. <laughs> right. Never yeah. Pool Fleshy Piercings. Ew. Uh, it's a. Uh, I almost said Never Palette Finish and Price, but it's never, Nose Palette. How's the Never Rate? It's Nose, nose Palette, palette finish, finish and Price. And price. Each category is out of five, and then we total everything up out of 20. Then we let you know whether or not this is a recommendation from us. Mm-hmm. Mm. So uh, are we Are we just going to keep Can track just, of our own scores? Maybe we just go one at a time and keep track of our own scores, like sure. one category at a time, because we can't it's write fine. it down. Yeah, right. that's fine. Okay, let's do that. Okay, so nose. Who wants to go first? Hmm. Okay, I'll, I'll go, go first. Okay, go ahead, Sarah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to give it hmm. a two. Yeah. I'll give it a 2.5. Yeah. Yeah, like, it's not bad. It's about middle of the pack for what it is. So I'll give it a 2.5. See, for me, I I would have to give it a 2 because I think that it's good, but it's lacking some sort of inviting punch that makes me think that it has more than that one brown sugar or vanilla note Mm. that's Mm -hmm. on there. Like, it's just a little boring for me. It is boring. It's yeah. not bad. It no, a, yeah. it's just, it's not the most inviting or exciting. It's a little one note, but it's, mm, you know, different than I think what we're used to. Yeah. So I'd probably give it a 2.5 as well, because where it is a little one note, it's a different and enjoyable sure. note. But like Sarah said, kind of middle of the pack. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not usually the harshest on, on these. Are you going to say a two? Uh, yeah, I'm giving it a two. Not fair enough. This. I went back and forth. Yeah. Palette wise though. It depends on if oh. we're saying noses overall of all the things we've ever nosed or nah, nose compared to like what it is. You know, what it is for the price. I and I mean else. I always try to approach these as like independent of yeah. other things. Yeah. But that's I mean, two point five. That's just me. I don't yeah. hate it. It's it's average. Yeah. C. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. I'll cool. give it a I'll give it a D plus, C minus, whatever. <laughs> Palette. Palette wise, though. I gave it a 3.5. Ooh. I was going to give it a, it. I was going to toss it a three. Yeah. Only, I think the only because really the palette's really short. Shines. It's pretty short. I mean, I guess that's a f- more. I should sure. probably lie more in the finish, I guess. Yeah. Well, I, I understand what you're saying, though. Like, the palette. I, get what, I totally get what you're saying. The palette is present. If it had a little, again, a little bit more punch to it or a little bit more present then I would be willing to give it higher. But I think that a 3.5 means that it is enjoyable, but not the best thing. Yeah, so 3.53, what do you give it, Sarah? I'm going to also go with a 3.5 here. Okay. Like, again, I think it's really solid for where it's at. I do think when we get to the finished portion, that is where it will be <laughs> lacking. But, I, yeah, I feel 3.5 yeah. is fair. Based on, I agree with Perry. <laughs> yeah, thanks. Well, I think awesome. uh, also the reason for my three is much like the nose, it's a little one note. Yeah. But. Yeah. Mm. And I really like those Black Forest Cake notes, though. Like sure, that, that, I do that too. That is unique. You know, and mm-hmm. then that's why I think I liked it. Mm-hmm. I gave it a little bit more. Yeah, and I think that it is one of the more unique palettes yeah. out there too. It is dark. It's it, it borders on nutty, but mm-hmm. I think it's more of that 
like you said, Black Forest, that cherry and that chocolate. Cocoa mm-hmm. kind of Cocoa, yeah. Yeah. taste to it. Yeah. Finish, though. Finish is sort of short, especially for a hunter prover. Yeah, I, I mean, there, prover, yeah. again, there are really interesting things with it, but I don't think that it's enough to, and I said enough weird, I don't think that it's enough to... Enough. F- <laughs> that's enough. Not- <laughs> <laughs> enough duh. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think it, that it is enough to bump it over a 1.5 for me. <clears throat> Whoa, you're giving it a 1.5. I'm giving the finish a 1.5. Dang, Barry yeah. with the low ball. Yeah, because there's not... it. What's there is good if it went on longer than, like, two seconds. Yeah. <laughs> I would give it higher than that, but so, I th- it, 1.5 is about as high as I can give on the I can the see that. I'm going to go with a 2 because I feel like anything under a 2 isn't just a short finish. It's a nasty finish right. or bad taste. Okay. For me, that's how, like, in my sure. head, my scoring system is going to work. Mm-hmm. So I got to give it a 2 because there's nothing wrong with the finish flavors and, like, the way it feels and stuff. Mm-hmm. It's not bad it's just not exciting mm-hmm. so two well in a shocking turn of events i'm gonna give it a 2.5 <gasps> oh, because after th- three or four drinks it actually does warm me up it does yeah. stick around longer than i initially thought and it's still it's still going i'm getting a brief kentucky hug like a kentucky awkward hug <laughs> you know kentucky, kentucky tap yeah um we had we had a uh a bourbon last episode for flying blind that the the hug was so aggressive that we called it the Kentucky strangle <laughs> <laughs> the Kentucky hug with a struggle yeah exactly <laughs> the Kentucky I'm not sure when this hug is supposed to end a is this a good a kind of hug or a bad kind yeah, of hug like I need an adult kind of hug show me on the doll I am an adult <laughs> uh, yeah so 2.5 I think it it does last a little bit longer than what I previously thought and much like the nose and the palate, it's also a little one note. But again, liking that note because it's different. And um, it is warming me up. And so, yeah, I'm going to give it 2.5. Yeah. Cool. So, which brings us to price. To price, yes. I'm going to give it a 5. You give the price 5. Dang. Is yeah. wow. that the first this 5 you've ever given? Yes, but the size Probably. of the bottle and the quality of what's in there for 22 to $23 is insane. It's crazy. I think it's great. I think it's a great value. So then you definitely have to give Heaven Hill BIB a five. Did I already rate that? No. No. We've not. We've actually never reviewed that on the show before. I would give it a five, though, because it's like, what, $12? Yeah. You'd probably get a five product, plus. It's up to 14 or 15 now. Well, still, the product that you get and the age that you get, I, I would give that a five us yeah. as well. Yeah. But yeah. this, for sure, the size of the bottle, it's bottled and bond, the quality of the stuff inside is great. For the, I mean, and it, it's really affordable. I, I mean, I, what do you, if this isn't a four to a five, what is? Right. Sure. You know, Heaven Hill, yeah. <laughs> ninety year bottle of bond, but yeah. what else? You know. Yeah. Turkey. Turkey yeah. Turkey one on one. Yeah. I'm gonna give it a. This is tough. I'm gonna give it a. Three point seven. I almost gave it a three point seven five. I, was, I came very close, it's but I'm actually... Oh, weird. It's definitely above average. I'm going to give it a four, though. Uh, yeah. It's uh, definitely a good value. Mm-hmm. But I feel like if it was more than kind of the one note that I was picking up on all the categories, it would push it to the five. Yeah. Um, well, I, I agree with Sarah in terms of there's not much out there quality and value-wise. Sound like somebody just got in a wreck. Sorry. Mm-hmm at this price I don't think that it's necessarily the best bourbon out there for the price but I think that it is super value for what it is and I just think that a four is about as darn traffic keeps going by and ah it's fine yeah, yeah alright I guess truck. you can hear it and I can't <laughs> now I'm going to give it a four I, okay. I think four is... Man, maybe I was too generous, it. or maybe you guys are just really harsh. <laughs> this has been very... This is the most uh, varied we've atypical. been. Atypical. Yeah. Like, okay, I yeah. guess, 
you all are like, I'd like to see more flavors and I'd like to see more of finish and da 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 da. But to be honest, this was a lower grade product made to be sold at under twenty five dollars. So for what it is, mm-hmm. I feel like it's great at being what it is. Sure. Yeah. Because whatever has the better finish and the more complex notes is going to be way more expensive. So I'm like, I don't know. I guess. I don't know. Maybe I'm just up too early and I'm in a great mood. <laughs> uh, yeah. No, I give it a five. I mean, my overall score is 13. And to me, that even still feels low. I'm going to have to have you all help me with my math. So. Yeah, shoot. repeat your scores. Okay. So I had a, oh, what did I have? Was it 2.5 on those? I gave it a th- yeah. three. No, I gave it a 2.5 also. Okay. I gave it the same as you. So 2.5. Then palette was a... Oh, shoot. Three? Three, yeah. I give the palette a 3.5. Or did you give it a 2.5 much. again? I don't remember. Well, I don't <laughs> know what you did. This is why you write did. things down. I know. I gave... Well, it's early and the finish higher than you guys. I gave it a 2.5. Because you Sarah went 1.5 to 2.5. Yeah. So that's 5. So 3 was the palette. That's 5, and we don't know what... Oh, 3 was the palette, so that's so 8. eight. And then you gave it a 3.7. So, so an 11.7. 11. 11.7. And then I gave it an 11 out of 10. <laughs> 11, 11 out of 10? An 11 out of 20. Okay. And I gave it a 13. All right. I think it's a recommend. I agree. You know, I, I don't yeah. think that I think this is anything. you should have this on your bar. Yeah. You And at the very least, you need to try it. But this isn't necessarily it's, the it's first thing I'm jumping for. Above average. If 10 is yeah. an average of 20, it's mm-hmm. above average. Yep. I agree. It's above average. Definitely. Definitely. So, You know, honestly, what hurt this was having that King of Kentucky because it was bringing up memories of that amplified mm-hmm. that, and I tried to get over that by like the third sip. But we all know you don't get over things, so. <laughs> <laughs> all right. <laughs> Chad holds crutches. I'm no. kidding. <laughs> no, I, I think I did get over it. You did. I think that's fair. And I'm going to enjoy I it. I think we're past it. Yeah. You know, recency bias is definitely a thing. Sure. To recent, recency? Recent. Recent. I don't know what you're talking about. Re- Reese's cups? Reese's cup bias. I think. <laughs> okay. <laughs> spending too much money on a bottle that disappoints you. Would make you biased. Well, yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Hurts. absolutely. So wallet bias. Yeah. Anyway, mm. that so, does it for our review. We're going to be back in a little bit again for our wrap up to see how we fared after waiting in line for six hours. Jeez, has it really been that long? It will have been six hours by the time we walk in. Golly. But, and then uh, we're also going to give our tips and bits at that point. So stick around, and we'll be back in a bit. Us. Silly. <laughs> Silly Did you leave anything for us? Absolutely not. Hell dummy. no. We don't have a gosh darn thing we left for it, you. Took it all. Do you want some <laughs> uh, Master's Keep revival? There's no Master's Keep left. <laughs> <laughs> there was so much Master's Keep. So, so how did we do, guys? Um, Poorly. I think we came in second. We came in a very close second, I, I would think say. Maybe we did third. about as good as I expected us to do. We each got a Weller 12, which, let's be honest, a year ago we all would have been absolutely thrilled with. Yeah. But that's yeah, not what we absolutely. came for today. That wasn't the Weller we were looking for. <laughs> it's not the Weller you're looking for. Yeah. It's not but the Weller you're looking for. There being only six bottles of that Weller, and the fact that we would have had to get have gotten there at 10 p.m. last night, I think... Yeah, Overall, it's about as expected. The the guy who was first in line, when did he get there? He, 9 a.m. yesterday? 9, 9 a.m. on Friday, Friday. Yeah. for a 9 a.m. on Saturday release. So 24 yeah. hours early. Stupid. No, thank you. Stupid. No. Who has that kind of time? Not me. Not me. So there was, yeah, so the, the CYPB went first, then the Weller handles the 1.75, which they had six of. Those went? Went first, mm-hmm. six or seven. And then they had, mm, say, about 30. I don't even know if it was 30. Of the 750s? Yeah, maybe maybe 20. Uh, oh, I well, think it was 12. probably closer to, yeah, 20. 21, 24. Okay. If we're going in rows of three. Yeah. Yeah, something like that of the Weller 12, just the 750s. 
You know, then the Rock Hill went. Then, went. then the Rock Hill went. Then people, I think, were grabbing the Woodford Double Double Oak. And there were like two McKenna's sitting up there. Which yeah, went. two little which McKenna's. Which was weird. I also was thought that, that was it, weird. Was that part of the release? No. No, so I So I could have just grabbed one. It was still limit one. You, you even, with the, even with the McKenna? Yeah. Dumb. It was up there Stupid. on the table. It was weird. Stupid. Never thought I'd see the day. <laughs> Yeah. I'm not happy about that. No. In case yeah. you can't tell. Well, next year, the uh, Heaven Hill six-year bottle and bond will be up there. You watch. <gasps> uh, Shut your mouth. I don't want that. I don't want something. these. It will win something. Pay for right. play. Yeah. Yep. I, I've got to be honest with you guys. I'm a little disappointed in this. I mean, this is definitely the earliest we've ever gotten up sure. for, uh, for a store thing. Yeah. And to come in second or even third, depending on, you know, if you put the 175s as second place, <laughs> it's a little disappointing. Yeah. But we did get a weller. Yeah. We did. I mean, I can say that Chad and I have definitely had, I think, worse outcomes where we got there, you know, at five. Right. But we didn't walk away with anything. <clears throat> yeah. So at least we walked away with something that is great. It's a great you know, consolation prize for what we were going for. Who no one should be mad Weller about twelve would be a consolation. Right. Well, no prize. one should be mad about getting a bottle of Weller twelve. Right. Yeah. It's just not what we were there for. No, but, but also we. I mean, we each paid like forty dollars for it. Yeah. A bottle, and and usually Liquor Barn is the one that has more reasonable prices when it comes to Weller releases. Yeah, but I mean, <laughs> if you wanted to Chad turn around disagrees. and sell it, <laughs> you definitely could. I. I don't. No, I want to keep sure. that. So that's my, right. my hope was to get a 175 of Weller 12 and trade that for a 750 of the CYPB. But um, it's, if I could have even arranged ooh. that. Sure. Sorry. That might have been tough. What was the ooh for? I saw a shiny object. Uh, no, I saw a furniture was... store that's having going out of business sale, and I got we real excited. We should tell your listeners that we're yep. now driving. We are. We're on the we're, way to Total Wine. We're in a car. Um, because we're we would like automobile. to. Yeah, we would like to see what they have this morning. Because and they didn't do any announcements, but we know that they might have something coming in because they always like to have a little jab at Liquor Barn. So. They do. They do. Direct competitors. Yeah. It's like the Cola Wars, but it's the Liquor Wars. <laughs> oh. So what are we expecting from, from this? Anything? We heard there's some E.H. Taylor barrel proof over That'll there. That'll be gone. Chad yeah, thinks everything good will be gone. Uh at the very least, I need a new Pikesville. <laughs> so Yeah, and they have the better prices. And I they bet do have you, the better prices. I bet you that there's at least going to be... Special reserve over there, maybe. Ooh, special reserve. Sorry, it's I, like, know, hey. I know. I know. I know. I'm just but saying. People, it's like I, I have that feeling. Like I know. I know. Because it's been Spoiled. creeping. It's been creeping up everywhere. Yeah. Over the past few days, people who aren't in the know about bourbon still recognize Weller Special Reserve and want it, and are willing to pay. Yeah. More than what it's, you know, goes for normally. Mm -hmm. So I would be happy to get a bottle and you know pass it off to them for sure. a $10 handling sure. charge. <laughs> Nothing makes me feel older than telling my Weller Special Reserve story. Like, I can remember when you would walk in and you would see it on the bottom shelf for $19. <laughs> well, in my day, walked we in. walked to school uphill both ways in the snow. That's what it miles. was, and we liked it. <laughs> I'm 25, and... Uh, <laughs> Who put a question mark in the teleprompter? I'm 25? <laughs> I don't know, are you? <laughs> I don't know, you tell me. I don't know. <laughs> Anyway, I, I I will say I always subscribe to the theory that I would rather go to the Super Bowl and lose than not go to the Super Bowl at all. Yeah. You know? And, mm -hmm. I mean, not that going to a liquor barn on a Saturday is a at Super 3 a.m. is the Super Bowl, but <laughs> I would rather try and come up short than not try at all. I mean, you never cast. You never catch if you don't cast. There we go. Uh, I've been yeah. up since three. And I mean, yeah. at least this way, you know, we can uncork however we need to uncork it, find out at a restaurant, pull some strings. It mm -hmm. won't be our bottle, but we can do it. Sure. And for our fans, but we won't have it to ourselves personally. And you know what? At the end of the day, that's okay. You can't win them all. Just so much FOMO. <laughs> it is so much FOMO. But if we uncork it and we're like, eh, it's just okay, then we won't have FOMO anymore. It's, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'll be honest with you. I've never been one who has clamored over Weller 12. I think it's solid, but I've never been like, I, I, oh, got to get me that I think I like the 107 a little bit better. Yeah. Well, and, and once I really started digging into the 107, I started liking it more. Yeah. And I still think that the, yeah, again, I, I still think that the 12-year is really solid, but 
I think the one. I mean, don't get me wrong. Out. I'm not complaining about the twelve year. Well, but. no, of course not. And that's <laughs> that's like a whole other discussion. Like these people who are hardcore, you know, Weather Twelve fans, and this also goes for some other uh, releases. Um, they're like, yeah, you know, today's Weather Twelve is good, but man, you got to get those bottles with the raised W, you know, cause back when the, it had the raised W yeah. that's, that was a really special stuff or, mm-hmm. you know, I mean, and we've even experienced it with the wild Turkey, like all oh, that 2010 wild Turkey one Oh one that we ran across is really something special. It's yeah. just, you know, a little bit better than today's stuff. So you even get into that. It's, it's like, it's like, uh, the, what I would call the, the green day method or, um, uh, theory or, or, uh, what was I calling it? Um, I don't know. Theory sounds like a good The word. geometry thing. Oh, hypotenuse. <laughs> the Green Day hypothesis? Hypothesis? Hypo- hypotenuse triangle. It's like... Here's my hypotenuse. You know, what, what bands do you like? Oh, I like Green Day. Oh, but I mean like the early stuff. And then you have to quantify it with, you know, oh, I don't like the stuff that Green Day's putting out this now. Song. I like it, you know, these that's albums. That's how I am with Maroon 5. Up until this album. So, you know, <laughs> it's like, that's how specific you can get even with Bourbon. Oh, I, I'm a real big Weller 12 fan. Oh, but, you know, up until they stopped putting the race W on the bottle or, you know, whatever sure. whatever it was. Sure. You know, from these years. I like Pappy. But, you know, the Stitzer are Weller juice, not the, you know, Buffalo Trace smash bill or whatever. Right. You know, it's like right. when, you, when you have to get that. So many qualifiers. Dialed in yeah. about it. That's when you really know you're talking to a... Uh, a bourbon nerd, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what ourselves. I would say? I'd like to blind them and see if they could pick it out. Oh, yeah, me too. In a perfect world, I would be able to do that to everyone. I would just man on the street, blind taste everybody. Yeah. Always. But that's not the world we live in. So. And I like to say, I like to give strangers bourbon. Because, <laughs> <laughs> you know, your average drinker doesn't go to the trouble of blinding themselves. Sure. Or being blinded, you know. Mm-hmm. By by friends or whatever. So when they have this emphatic, oh, this would be my top five. You'd be like, really? Because I used to say that too. I used to say this is my top five. But man, that's changed over the years. Yeah, sure, sure. And it does. It's always evolving. I feel like your top five is not permanent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I feel like that that pretty much rounds out yeah, how I feel just... about what what happened today. Sure. Yeah. Well, I I think that means that it's time for our next. And somewhat infamous segment, Ooh. Tips and Bits, Tips and bits. Tips where we and bits. tell you things that we may or may not recommend. <laughs> oh, we can tell things we don't recommend? Sure, if you have something that you... Well, that's that a tip. You... Don't waste your time. Oh, here... <laughs> yeah, here's a tip. But your bit, though. <laughs> yeah, yeah, your bit. So uh, it depends on what you want to... Don't eat lead paint. That's a tip. Okay, uh-huh. there's... Uh, uh, Sarah, what's your <laughs> tip or bit? Um... <laughs> Oh, I'm gosh. kidding. I'm I kidding. Just... Chad can have an actual. Okay, go ahead, Chad. <laughs> um, I feel like I've done this before. I want to recommend something I haven't finished watching. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like I recommended a TV series when I'd only seen like the first episode. Or you hadn't seen any of it. Uh, yeah, right. And but I you was ended like, up liking oh, it. those commercials look good. Um, <laughs> I started watching Super Troopers 2 on the plane. Oh, yeah? And I got about 25, maybe 30 minutes into it, and I was enjoying it. So I look forward to finishing it. I feel like it's a good movie, probably, unless it takes a turn for the worse. Um, <laughs> so I, I would recommend that. Yeah. He Is recommends that, my... that right meow. Right meow. Sarah? Um, let's see. We've been watching a lot of MasterChef, which I love, adore it. I don't know why, because... It's like very predictable in some time, some ways, but I just love to watch them cook, um, and I love to guess who's going home. So, I personally would enjoy that. Uh, have been enjoying that. And then a tip, I would say, I also watched the latest season of Orange Is the New Black on Netflix. <sighs> How was it? It was all right. Just all right? I heard it's back. I heard Orange is the New Black is like the new Orange is the New Black. (laughs) Oh, Chad. I will say, I think it's better than last season, but it still just feels like it was something that was supposed to be one or two seasons that they're like, okay, what can we do now? Okay, what new characters can we introduce? Yeah, is is she still in prison? Right. Well, they just keep furthering the plot. Well, it depends on... You know what she did before she got so in if, prison. If you chair. ever saw Weeds, it's the same creator who did Weeds, and the first couple of seasons of Weeds were really good. But then you started to wonder, like, why is this main character making these decisions? Every decision she makes is illogical, sure. and it just leads to more trouble, which is only clearly done to further the plot. And that's kind of how I felt about this latest season. So it was entertaining. I finished it pretty quickly, but uh, 
I don't know. <laughs> if you don't have a ton of time, I wouldn't worry too much about it. All right. So that's my tips and bits. There you go. Okay. Fair Gary. enough. I I saw Hunchback of Notre Dame for the first time in probably about ten years oh. last night. Freaking love that movie. It's really dark for a Disney movie, mm -hmm. but my goodness, it's so good. Yeah, it doesn't like the guy want to like take Esmeralda as his like yeah. slave or something. Yeah, he says she can either have him or he will murder her. Yeah, uh, uh, burning at the that's stake. That's a pretty big ultimatum. <laughs> yeah, it's a little uncomfortable and. I it, like Lucy and I were watching it together, and over and over she was like, "Oh my gosh!" <laughs> like I can't believe this was a kids movie. As our parents, did our parents let us watch this? My parents did. What's going on? My parents let me watch that movie so much I wore out the VHS, oh. and they had to buy me a new one. Dang. <laughs> and Perry didn't think... have that problem again until high school. I'm just oh, kidding. <laughs> wearing out a VHS. <laughs> That, but that you, movie was American Pie. You can cut that out. Oh, <laughs> no, it's fine. It's all good. Um, that, that's that's about all I have, tips and bits wise. Bazinga. Right. Yeah, I see how it is. Uh, Chad and Sarah, where can people find you on social media? Addis Bourbonite is always the best place. And well, what very, else? Sorry, I just, I just realized that I did not follow that up with uh, you know more things that they could <laughs> do to reach oh, out to no, you. Oh, no, that's fine. It's best not... <laughs> best place is YouTube.com slash It's Bourbonite. At It's Bourbonite on the social media, patreon.com slash It's Bourbonite, amazon.com slash shop slash It's Bourbonite. You know what I just realized? I don't think I've had you all on since I was on a live episode of oh. the show. Uh, right? Yeah, I don't think I, I, I've been on since then. I was on a live episode of It's Bourbon Night, yeah. which you can still go and find on their, their channel. Go do yeah. it. It was a lot of fun. I, we, we all drank a whole lot of bourbon oh, that yeah. afternoon. Oh, yeah. The rest of that night was a rough one. Sarah me. fell asleep. I did. Before I, did. I left. Yep. <laughs> well, we had a lot of fun, so. Fun was had. Things got a little Twice. out of hand, but. It was. Yeah. Uh, if you want to follow up with the show on social media, you can go to at my bourbon pod on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. You can also find us on Patreon at patreon.com slash my bourbon podcast. Give us a rate and review on iTunes or wherever. And if you have nice things to say, then leave us a review. If not, <laughs> don't no tell us how you think that it's an extended bros phone call, <laughs> which is something that happened this past oh. week, which is stupid. Just if you don't have anything nice to say. Perry, you can't make everybody happy all the time. Apparently I I've can't. Learned. It's fine. It's fine. Uh, thank you all so much for listening. We really appreciate it. We are pulling into Total Wine just as I'm wrapping this up. Chad and Sarah, thank you all for being on the show this week. Absolutely. Thanks, we'll have you on again soon, I'm sure. But until then, I'm Perry, and this is my birth podcast. 